Look at the independent samples t-test. The independent samples t-test, or also known as an independent t-test for short, compares the means between two unrelated groups on the same continuous dependent variable. And it's important to understand that these are for two unrelated groups because there are other tests which um, look at related groups. Um, so I'm saying this is, you know, it's similar, but it's different tests than say like the paired or matching t-test. We usually start with just looking at considering the assumptions of, in, of any of our statistical tests. And for the independent samples t-test, the dependent variable should be measured on a continuous scale. The independent variable should consist of two categorical independent groups. Um, and as with almost all statistical tests, there should be an independence of observations. Um, you should uh, be aware that there, that there are no significant outliers because that will actually make quite a bit of difference in your results. Um, the dependent variable should be approximately normally distributed. And when we talk about normal distribution, it's also the same as a Gaussian distribution or a parametric distribution for each group of the independent variables. And then lastly, we have the homogeneity of variances, um, which I'll discuss a little bit further along. The essentials of the independent samples t-test. The test in itself is for unpaired t-test, also known as the two-sample t-test, independent samples t-test, all the same. The goal of this test is really to compare the means of the two groups. Um, for example, you know, we're comparing the pulse rate of people taking two different drugs. Additional assumptions, both data sets are samples from Gaussian distributions, as I previously stated, from the same population, I'm sorry, with the same population standard deviation. The effect size is really the difference between two means. The confidence interval of the difference between two means, that's actually the confidence interval that we're actually looking for. Um, the null hypothesis is that the two population means are identical, and the alternative hypothesis is that the two population means are not identical. And when we consider the p-value, the question that the p-value answers if the two population means are identical, what is the chance of observing such a large difference by chance alone in an experiment of this size? And in most statistical uh, analyses, our p-value, uh, you know, we set it at 0 0.05. Considering a, a Gaussian distribution or normal bell-shaped curve, you know, this is very common that we have this curve that uh, I always refer to it as a Taco Bell curve, but it's really the, the bell-shaped curve where we have the center is, is the uh, the mean, and then we can go to the right one standard deviation, two standard deviation, three standard deviation, and of course we can always go to the left one, two, three, and, and now I count to four standard deviations. So this is always a, a good chart to keep around if you if you get uh, a little sidetracked or a little confused on how the distribution works with standard deviations. When we compare the comparison of the two sample means is really looking at the difference between the two means. And you know, earlier as I stated, the null hypothesis is that these two means come from underlying populations with the same mean. So the difference between them is equal to zero. So we have the mean of one, um, the mean of the first group, subtract the mean of the second group, and that equals zero. When we utilize a sample, we get a point estimate, which is the mean. But what we're really interested in is the population estimate, which is a confidence interval. And so we're really comparing, there's one confidence interval, subtract, subtract one confidence interval from the, the other confidence interval, is the value of zero somewhere included in that? And if the value of zero is included in the subtraction of the confidence intervals, then we would say, then we would retain the null hypothesis and reject the alternative hypothesis. That's something to keep in mind. It's, as we go through this.